thing about building a church. Yes, he did. Read Matthew 16 and 18. The Lord said unto Peter, and I say also unto thee, that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against them. And I'll give you the keys, Peter, to the kingdom, that whatsoever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatsoever you loose on earth, it shall be loose in heaven. These keys to the kingdom would be the gospel. Once this gospel is being preached, it unlocks and opens the hearts of men. Men walk in and they obey the truth because they believe the truth. In order to be saved, you must be taught right in order to be baptized right. If you were not taught the truth, then you're yet in your sins. Read Acts chapter 19. There were people that had received baptism at one time in their life. Here, Peter, they came over and Paul and they came and they seen that these people, he asked them, have you received the Holy Ghost since you believe? And they said, we don't even know what a Holy Ghost is. And then he asked the question, unto what then were you baptized? And they said, we were baptized under John baptism, but they didn't know anything about the Holy Spirit. They didn't know anything about Jesus coming and teaching repentance and remission of sin. And the Bible said they were baptized again. In order to be taught right, you must be baptized right. In order to go to heaven, you must receive both. Jesus said in Mark 16, 15, he that believed the gospel and he is baptized shall be saved. He that believeth not, he shall be damned. So in other words, baptism plus obeying the truth, it equals the salvation of God by you accepting his word. If you're not a Christian, you need to be. You ask the question, what must I do to be saved? What must I do to be a Christian? One thing about false leaders, they're not gonna tell you this gospel. They're not gonna tell you this truth. They're gonna hide it from you. Some of them, they know the truth, but they're not gonna tell you. You ask your preacher, your so-called preacher, though he be a man or woman, you ask them, how many churches did Jesus build? And please tell them to give you scripture, book, chapter, and verse. You ask them that God ever build or promise that he would build another church, if any. Then you take him to Ephesians chapter 5. Jesus, he compared the church even as a man and his wife are together. He said, husband, love your wife. Even as Christ also loved the church, he gave himself for it, that he might sanctify him, that he might cleanse it with the washing of water by the word, that he might present it unto himself. A glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. So ought men to love their own wives as they love their own bodies. And then he says in verse number 33, this is a great mystery, but I speak concerning Christ and his church. That's what he was really talking about. So if you're not a Christian, you come to the Lord by hearing his word. Romans 10, 17. So then faith come by hearing. Hearing come by the word of God. You must believe his word. Hebrews 11 and 6. But without faith, it is impossible to please God. He that's coming to God must believe that God is. And he's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. You must repent of your sin. Luke 13, 3 and 5. The Lord said, I tell you no, but except you repent, you shall all likewise perish.